versus Thrall. For Doomhammer. I will fight with honor. Because he played two silver golems pre-turn five, like turn two and three. Actually, it was turn two and three, I think. Or is it turn three and four? Mm, I curve at okay here with one, two, coin four. At this point, I might want to keep Psychotron. What's better for ladder, Cthulhu wear or control? Uh, I think control wear is better. Or, sorry, Cthulhu wear is better. The light protects him. Let's go not worry about our mana curve as much as getting like the immediate good trade and immediately good value here. Cause so you try to curve out. I mean we don't curve out anyways technically, because we can't play two weapons like turn three and four kind of. Can't just can't use our charges that fast. I fight. Huh, Consecrate, but that is basically not good enough here. Okay, so we needed one ping there. That was the max, the best chance we had to clear everything without using Consecrate. I'm thinking it might be worth it to attack here. Uh, this guy can threaten the Divine Shield. Regardless of it, whether this is mid-range or aggro. I mean, once I get this guy down, I can then use Psychotron to Totem Stomp. I don't have to attack Totem every turn. I have another True Sword Champion in my hand as well. That guy's threatening like Flame Tongue into the, into the Divine Shield and... A variety of like totem snowball cards. Okay, so does midrange. I think he's using Maelstrom Portal, probably one of the new cards. I might actually just play Sylvanas. I feel like it's hard for him to kill Sylvanas. Although technically, I just play Second Psychotron. I let me think about this for a second. I think 1-1's worth a lot in this matchup, so even if I just squeeze an extra 1-1 next turn for this play, it should be worth it. It's hard for mid-range Paladin to kill Sylvanas without Hex anyways. Uh, he'd have to have like... Yeah, so Hex is fine, right? Even if it drops Sylvanas later, it's just to bait out the Hex before like Tyrion and Cairn. But yeah, I, I mean, he would have to... So I don't think he's running Lava Burst. If he's running Azure Drake, it's very likely he's running Lightning Storm and Hex. I'll probably go ahead and conserve my Divine Shield here. I don't think there's too many big minions. The biggest minion is like 3-6 or 6-5 on his end. So going from 0-1 to 3-3 is about the same value as like 5-5 to 3-3 on his end. And this way I get to conserve the Divine Shield here. Um, what's your first impression of Karazhan? I like Karazhan a lot. I, I think a lot of people don't like it based on what I've seen, but it's because I like the mid-range control style, like slow mid-range decks. Like this is one example of a slow mid-range deck. Fast mid-range deck is something more like Dragon Warrior. And another, another slow mid-range deck is kind of like a Yogg Druid. These, these kind of decks are my favorite, like curve-wise, style-wise to play, so I think Dragon Paladin and maybe even some like grinder mages, things like that can come from Karazhan, so that's why I like it. I guess like if you want like other fast mid-range decks, it's like Zoo and Hunter. Yeah, Zoo Hunter and Sh Shaman kind of. Zoo Hunter and Dragon War, I'm not sure Shaman what it's considered as. Depends how they build it, but I'm 
Should be able to get a soul and vigil here. I, I like not playing White Lord. This guy's too good. For justice, not in my house. See if we can get a squire for that one mana. Job done. If you're interested in my thoughts on Purify, you can check out my deck review. Cares in review. I'm gonna save the last charge with my weapon. I probably won't destroy this healing totem here. Or I guess I mean this Wrath of Air totem. I don't want to fall behind. If I play Ragnaros Light Lord, then I can get hexed, and then he can be ahead on board because he has seven mana after hex. So I'm gonna make this play here. I actually don't think I need to kill Spell Power Totem. Even though it's scary to leave up. Like, it just doesn't make a. Eh, Maelstrom Pearl makes a difference, actually. But nah, the weapon's worth more. It doesn't really make a difference in Storm, because these three all die anyways, and this says Divine Shield. There is a lot Fire Bat stole my chat rules. What are my chat rules? I don't even know what they are. Looks like probably a Consecrate this turn. So I can consecrate and a true sword of the thunder bluff. You do three damage here, that's perfect. But actually, do I have lethal? Mm. No. Not in my house. Six, seven, plus four, eleven, yeah. For justice. Mazer Rackham 1, thanks for resubbing. Welcome back to the Strife Crew. Crowfist. I'm still doing the Bean Boozle. I'm gonna do it this pretty much this whole month. So Blue Jelly Bean. I've gone zero for two today. Berry blue or toothpaste. That's toothpaste, so technically zero of three, but toothpaste is pretty good. Minimum dollar amount for Dying Show, I think it's two dollars. Farbat is number one tournament winner, but I don't think he's that good. Like Granite said, just lucky. Probably a combination of both. I think Farbat's good though. Oh, that's the chat rules, I see. I mean, that's what I do usually. Toothpaste, not bad. Uther versus Jaina. You asked for it. I will fight with honor. So I'm going to say some thoughts about Ivory Knight. Actually, I'm going to think of Mulgan first. This is not that good against Mage, but I don't know if I'd go so far as to Mulgan it. Let's see here. It stops him from playing a 3-2 on turn 2. Unless he coins it out. Alright, so what was I talking about? Oh yeah, um... Ivory Knight. The reason why I think Ivory Knight is actually pretty good is because I feel like if you run Ivory Knight, you don't really need to run a lot of other support cards. You know, like Soul, not, not Soul Vigil, um, like Forbidden Healing and I guess like those type of support cards. And Lay on Hands, actually, those are the ones I'm thinking of. Because it like doubles down. That's why I think Ivory Knight is better in a mid-range list than a control list. That's why I'm not... That's why I'm willing to play Ivory Knight in this kind of tempo list instead of running Doomsayers and Double Equality Consecrates and Pyromancer Consecrate uh, Equalities. I fight. Because the, the the benefit of running Ivory Knight over Land Hands and Forbidden Healing is that's both a tempo play and a heal and even like kind of fuel for a tempo deck. But that just serves a lot of purposes. Multi-dimensional card. And you can just get get rid of land hands and get rid of forbidden healing and just have ivory knight take care of like all your needs basically as far as like healing and those like support type cards go it also tells your opponent what spell you discovered kind of that's true especially get some big spells like eight or ten i guess it's obvious even six is kind of obvious there's only two i think enter the coliseum and avenging wrath isn't double right and play dull truce a bit clunky? I think it's fine. Just weapons are good. It certainly can be a little clunky, but if the weapons are good enough, they're runnable. 
like warriors used to run two death bites and two fire axes, and there were, it was never like close to cutting any of them really. Like people felt fine with four of them. Well, part of it is Paladin's early game at the moment is very, very weak. That's why Paladin's not a good class, or at least before Karazhan was not a great class. I can't even play Peacekeeper, even if I wanted to play for tempo, which I actually kind of do is the sad thing. But I have to like buff one of his minions. I can't kill them first. Actually, no, let's just soul and visual. Actually, I totally forgot I had this card in my hand. That makes more sense. But yeah, I think Palin will have better early game post Karazhan because of Nightbane Templar. Someday I'll be just like you. Arcane Blast. So let's see if we can pick up a weapon here. If not, our curve is going to be pretty stacked going past turn 6, so I might as well just play this guy out. I won't have time to play him later, or at least like not against Boromantle or Drake's next turn. Why is Priest of the Feast considered trash? I don't know if it's considered trash, I haven't really heard too many opinions about it. Is it? I mean, I don't, I don't consider it bad, but I don't consider it game changing for Priest either. Like I think it'll, I rate it a 3 out of 5, meaning I think it'll like be competitive viable and I think it'll you know make cuts in competitive decks but I don't think it'll be a great card in a competitive deck like usually when you make a deck yeah you know, there's like the really good cards in your deck and then there's like the you know like the 25th card you put into 30 card you, know, you have to have 30 cards in your deck so I probably consider it one of the bottom cards I could just truce or champion here Get rid of it. Sylvanas basically forces him to trade in and then like Frostbolt. Frostbolt then trade in ping or something. Now Ivory Knight's not getting a lot of healing value. Let's do this. Turn 7 Sylvanas. I, I like turn 7 Sylvanas more than turn 6 Sylvanas here because I don't have a strong 7 drop. And Sylvanas like kind of resets the board so I, I want to reset the board right before Tyrion. I think that makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, the, now we drew it in Azoth. We could play Arena here, but it'd be kind of weak. I, I, I do want to reset the board before Tyrion. And then if I don't play here, I'd play turn 9, because I'm playing Death Rattles pre Tyrion. And I can just play Light Lord turn 9. For justice, the battle! Just force him to have something. If I just trade here, then you can just trade the 5 5, and now he has to cast a spell. I hope he doesn't have Polymorph. Why huge Toads instead of Pyro Equality Synergy? This is a tempo deck, that's why it's not a control as much. It's not, it's not aimed to play reactively, it's try to play proactively, so that's why. I think Warriors received a nerf carries and I don't think any of the Warrior cards are constructed playable. Or at least gonna be end up constructed playable. Like I don't think there are any of them are making the cut when the meta dies down. Okay, I have this guy you can get a lot of value from For Justice. It's actually Ragnar is even stronger than, say, Psychotron Huge Toad Hero Power. Because one Fireball takes him out. I do get the heal, but I'm not in any immediate danger of dying. Especially with the Taunt, I get to play a uh, Death Rattle. Another Death Rattle here. He doesn't have like 10 cards in his hand. If he had more cards in his hand, if I don't heal this turn, he could like burn me down low enough where I, I'm scared of playing his off next turn. But because he has two cards, I don't really know if that's even possible. Although I think it kind of just happened. 
Flame Strike was really good there, and I kind of didn't expect to get Flame. I kind of started to like Cyclone to get burned down, and then kind of be like a one less burn spell. I killed everything too, right? So I didn't get the trade with Huge Toad either. Uh, For justice. Yeah, let's play Tyrion first. I don't want to risk it. Technically, I should be okay. Ah, no, this is no reason to risk it. Two burn spells through taunt is is a uh, easy kind of to do nine or ten. I don't think Irene Knight fits better control list. Like I said, I I, I just talked about. It. I know people are still coming in channel, so it's. I think like the best thing about Ivory Knight is because it's like a body as well. You can replace cards like Forbidden Healing Land Hands. Ivory Knight can be like your one card, does everything for that slot. It's like a really flexible tempo slash shield card. It even gives you some draw also. And a control list, I think that's less important to have the body. Like if you're playing a tempo list like this, it feels really bad if you if you um If you have to spend all your turn playing a heal and no minion, it's just too weak of a turn. Like, I'm not even running two qualities, so if I just land hands, I might never make a comeback on board. Or Forbidden Healing for 10, same problem. Like, Forbidden Healing was really only good in like against Freeze Mage, things like that, really. Just because if you spend 10 mana Forbidden Healing, you just fall too far behind in tempo. I've tried a lot of Forbidden Healing in like mid-range pallies against like Hunter and it's never really been good. 8, 10, 13, plus 11, 24, 25, 27, 6, 9, 15, 20, 25. None may steal us. I just want to count twice for this kind of move. If you miscount I could lose the game maybe. Because I could have just healed, but I'm kind of low, just in case. 